What began life as a $99 Kickstarter that I was very skeptical of is now a $300 commercially available SLA 3D printer. This is the Spark Maker. I'm James Bruce and you're watching MakeUseOf.com Reviews. So let me explain this whole SLA printer thing because it was pretty new to me too. Until now the only 3D printers I've played with have been FDM or Fused Deposition Modeling Printers. Now that means that they take a filament of some kind, a piece of spaghetti, plastic spaghetti, they melt it and then they extrude it out layer by layer until you have your finished product. An SLA printer on the other hand, or a stereolithography apparatus printer, uses resin, a photosensitive resin, as the raw material. It's a liquid. And your model is created by selectively curing that liquid layer by layer, either by use of a UV laser or an LCD screen, in this case, with UV LEDs underneath. As one layer is cured, it's pulled out a bit, and then another layer is made on top of that. Now this isn't a new technique by any means, it's been available for a long time on pretty high-end printers in the thousands of dollars range. But this year I think we're going to see a lot more affordable SLA based printers. Now the reason the Spark Maker excited me is because an SLA printer can get much higher resolution than your average FDM printers. This one claims up to 10 times the resolution or 10 microns layer height. And because the resolution is so much better than your standard FDM filament printer, it makes these sort of printers a lot more suitable for, say, desktop wargaming minis or jewellery or even dentistry work they're used for. The size of the item you can produce is a lot smaller than an FDM printer, but the resolution is so much higher. That extra resolution is a huge deal. Well, it would be if it worked anyway. Unfortunately, in the two to three weeks I've spent with the Spark Maker, I've yet to get a successful full print out of it yet. But first, let's talk about the hardware. It's a fairly simple cylindrical shape, just less than 30 centimeters tall and about 17 centimeters in diameter. Most of that is the red case, which doesn't secure to the base at all. It just lifts off and sits on top. Now this blocks out the UV light so that when you're printing, it won't damage your eyes, but also the print itself won't be damaged by UV light coming from the sun. Inside you'll find the resin vat, which normally secures to the base. This is where you place your resin inside and the print is pulled out of. You've got a standard build plate, metal one, and there's a single axis in this device, so it only moves up and down. That's the only moving part. The actual X and Y is created by the LCD screen underneath here upon which an inverse of what you're trying to print is produced, and then UV light is shone from underneath, which cures the resin. So at the bottom of the resin tank is a piece of tight plastic called an FEP film. Now this is a consumable item, you will need to replace it when it gets cloudy or broken. The build area, which is the total size you can theoretically produce, is about 10 by 5 by 12.5 centimeters. In terms of on-device controls, the only thing you have is a single twisty knob and button at the front here. The twisty bit is used to raise or lower the build platform when you're calibrating it, and the single button is used to start the print. There's only one way of getting a print file onto this device, and that's by using the included SD card. Once you've downloaded a model or sliced one using their custom software, you just put the file on here, place it in and then hit print. So of course, when you want to print something else, the only way to do that is to take the SD card out, go back to your computer and change the file over. There are no USB printing options and you can't print over the network using OctoPrint or anything like that. It's only through the SD card. On the topic of consumables, you also have the resin itself, of course. Now the one downside here is that resin is a lot more expensive. While one kilogram spool of filament typically costs about $20, 500 grams of the resin will cost you about 50 to 80 dollars. Of course the models you're printing are going to be a lot smaller so it'll still get used at the same rate roughly but still on a gram for gram basis it's a lot more expensive. Then you'll also need some isopropyl rubbing alcohol or preferably 99% IPA and that costs about $20 for five liters. On top of that, you'll probably also want some disposable gloves. You really don't want to get resin on your fingers. It's nasty, sticky stuff. So one of the other points about the Spark Maker that I thought was particularly cool was that they added the option of a water-based resin. Now, as I mentioned, usually you need to wash the resin 
with rubbing alcohol to clean it off after the print. However, the LCDW resin which they sell is water washable. So you don't need to mess around with the alcohol, you can just use plain old tap water. Now the final prints from these do tend to be a bit more brittle than other resin prints. However, that shouldn't be a huge problem. As it is, they offer a wide range of resins. So I tested with both the LCDW, the water soluble one, and the LCDE or elastic one. As I said, I didn't manage to get a successful print out of any of them. However, I should say that the partial prints that I did get were absolutely stunning quality. You can see that the level of detail on them is, is just amazing really, and it's so far beyond what you would get from a standard filament based printer. It's just a shame that I couldn't get any more than a couple of fragments out of it. So nothing I tried, whether that was a custom model that I'd sliced using their software or the demo models that they provide for you to download, none of them actually finished completely. This one was a Hero Forge sample, a little miniature model. The main issue was that all of the supports just completely failed. Their software is pretty easy to use, but perhaps quite buggy. So it appears I'm not alone in my issues with the printer either. After joining the closed Facebook group, I found a number of people who were just trying to offload their printer, having had a rather miserable time with it and still not managing to get anything successful. Now that's not to say there weren't people who did manage to get successful prints, but most of them had gone through the modding process. For a start, they'd replaced the FEP film on the bottom of the resin tank immediately. The one that's supplied with the printer is apparently just quite bad. But they'd also done what's called now the LCD mod, which is where you take the LCD screen out, you flip it upside down, take the top layer of glass off, and then reseal everything back up. This has the effect of bringing the LCD screen closer to the build platform, and therefore gives you more accurate, more reliable results. So that's all fine, but when I test a product, I'm going to test what the company sends me to test with. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through a series of mods just to make the thing work. So as it stands, out of the box, I can't really recommend the Spark Maker at all because it just hasn't worked for me. So in a break to the norm on this channel, we're not actually going to be running a giveaway as we normally do for all of our reviews. I think you'll end up spending more on consumables than you'd actually get out of the printer. SLA printing can produce some absolutely stunning results. For small, highly detailed models, an SLA printer is absolutely the way to go, just not this one. Now, obviously your experience may vary and you might be one of the lucky few that does manage to get great prints out of a Spark Maker. So anyway, thank you for watching this review. It's a shame the Spark Maker didn't live up to my expectations at all, but that's just the way it is sometimes. But do please subscribe if you're not already, because typically when we review two or three products a week, we do give one away of everything that we review. In fact, head on over to makeuseof.com slash giveaways, where you'll see all of our current giveaways that are still running. And do also check out the main website at makeuseof.com, where we have tips, tricks, and free PDF download guides on all aspects of computing. Thanks for watching and until next time.